What's going on guys? It's Eric from Intelligent Quads coming back at you with another video. Today is a very exciting day because today is the day that I'm getting a drone to start doing real drone videos. Um, Y'all have been asking for a long time to show off what I've been doing in sim in real life and this is the first step towards that goal. So. In this box right here, I've got a pretty unique quad sent to me by a friend from Quad Standard Labs and I'm going to be unboxing this video and kind of showing you guys what it can do and if it's a good research platform. Okay, I've talked with Troy and there should be a couple things in this box. I think there's gonna be some sensors and a drone as well as some other goodies. So let's start taking the unboxing of this. Uh, so we got the packing slip. Um, I'm sure it's got some uh, good stuff on there. Um, we got, looks like a ton of props. Holy cow, that's a lot of props. Wow, that'll be cool. And then uh, looks like got another thing over here. We got the here link um, ground control station and uh, controller. So that'll be great to look at. And then uh, let's take another look down here. Oh boy, this is really cool. Holy cow. Okay, so. Let me, uh, let me just reframe this a little bit and we'll talk about this. Holy cow. So this is the uh, thick Sydney lifter from Quad Standard Labs. And um, what this is, is an FPV drone that's designed to carry a big, high quality, heavy camera um, and get very dramatic FPV shots, but with the quality of a large camera. And what I'm gonna be doing with this drone is figuring out if this is actually going to be a good research platform uh, for some of us who are trying to experiment with uh, drone autonomy. Um, some of the things that I'm really interested in is um, these double stacked, this double stacked rotor system. So uh, for most of you guys, you guys are gonna be flying in a confined space in a research vi environment. And a lot of what drives your guys' uh, drone um, design is, you know, trying to keep it small and uh, safe, right? Um, but that ends up coming with some trade-offs. So when you have a small drone, you end up having to have uh, small props, which are less efficient than big props. Um, but what this ends up doing is essentially doubling your rotor disc area. So your drone will end up um, being more efficient and being able to fly for longer and or carry more payload. Um, so we're gonna be configuring this thing to run RD Pilot and seeing if this is a viable research drone. So uh, stick around for that. So this ended up being a pretty big project um, with a lot of different steps just to get um, this platform running RD Pilot. So the first thing I did was I connected my Spectrum receiver to the drone, uh, and soldered that up, then I did all the standard RD Pilot sensor calibrations, that's the accelerometer, the gyro, and the compass. And then I did the radio calibration to teach the drone where the endpoints of the sticks are. And then I started working through the mapping for the X8 um, configuration for RD Pilot. And that ended up being a little bit more of a challenge than I expected because on the documentation, they use a numbering scheme, which is different than the motor test um, letter scheme. And that kind of confused me for quite a while. And to be honest, I am not super comfortable talking about um, how that all works uh, quite yet, but I got it to work after many hours of trying. So then once I got everything configured, uh, it was time to do some flight tests. And the way that I did the flight test for this new vehicle was starting with acro mode, which is the lowest level of the control loops, which only controls to the angular rates of, uh, of the drone. Um, so the first couple things that I needed to adjust were the throttle idle percentage and the uh, the acro gains. And I needed to adjust the throttle idle command so that the drone wouldn't fly away. The thick drone is a very powerful quad and with running so little weight on it, if 
If I hadn't adjusted the default throttle idle value, there's a good chance that it would have just flown away <laughs> immediately as soon as I armed. So I basically put those almost all the way to the min settings in Arty Pilot so that we could get a nice slow idle speed when, when you armed. The next thing was I used the here link to view the telemetry as I was arming the drone. And initially when I did this, it was very uh, oscillatory, even just sitting on the ground. And as soon as I put even a little bit of throttle, it would oscillate. So I started moving down the, the P and I and D games for the rate loop, the acro loop, and uh, brought those down to a more reasonable level for this powerful drone. The next thing I did after that was I ran Arty Pilot's automated auto tune. And uh, this kind of put the gains in an area that you know, are a pretty good baseline to work with. Uh, it was still kind of sluggish, but that may not actually be a fault of the auto-tune. That might have be a fault of mine because when I was doing the auto-tune, I was actually struggling with losing connection to the here link. That's something that I've struggled with over the last couple of weeks. And initially I thought it was probably the antenna placement because both of the antennas were on the front of the aircraft initially, and I was standing behind the aircraft. So I then moved the antennas to the back um, and that didn't really help either. And then I was reading online that like, oh, you shouldn't mount it on carbon fiber. So then I put it on the legs and then that didn't help either. So finally I figured out that the here link air system was, was uh, likely getting uh, power starved based off of where the power cable was soldered to the, the voltage step down on the ESC. So I talked to Troy and he sent me a, um, a higher power uh, voltage step down, uh, basically a BEC and connected that up and after that i didn't have any more problems with the here link um so then i decided to start doing some range testing with the here link it's rated for 19 kilometers but i'm kind of skeptical i'm pretty skeptical on that range um however i did a little range test i only flew for 500 meters and that wasn't limited by the here link at all that was more limited on uh, my comfortability of flying so far away from myself um, so hopefully one day uh, soon I'll be able to like go out in a, a big wide open field and uh, do a more uh, a more confident range test. Next thing after that was I borrowed my friend's GoPro and connected that to the Here Link and started streaming the video, the FPV video in real time over the Here Link digital FPV link to the Here Link ground unit. Play a little bit with the settings there. Um, because the GoPro Hero 7 has the hypersmooth technology, which will make your shots look a lot better. However, when you're streaming that, that adds actually a lot of lag. So it wasn't actually that great for um, flying FPV. When I turned off hypersmooth, that was better for flying FPV, but then your shots were a lot less uh, stable. So that's gonna be something that I'm gonna be playing with going into the future. And then the final thing that I did was I did an endurance test. And to do this endurance test, I basically took a 4,400 milliamp hour battery, a 6S, and had the drone perform autonomous circles until the until the drone reached a voltage level of 20.6 uh, 20.6 20 volts, and then I landed. And this ended up having an endurance of 18 and a half minutes which is pretty impressive for uh, this drone. I also have a 6,600 milliamp hour battery um, and hopefully that one will get a little over 20 minutes uh, with this current weight setup. The next steps for this project are to start integrating a companion computer to it so that uh, I can do more of what uh, you guys have been seeing me do in simulation and bringing that out, showing you guys how to test it and showing you guys the real world applications of all the simulation and programming that we've been doing. So I hope you guys find uh, this project very interesting and uh, please let me know if there's uh, specific things you would like me to try out in real life on a real drone and uh, tell me what you guys are interested in me doing and I'll try to work those into the videos. Um, but yeah, that's all for now. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.